Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, you might have seen some of my live Twitch streams, and one of the things that always gets asked is, can I go and deorbit a moon? Well, I'm here to clear up that myth and uh, analyze it and tell you what really it would take to uh, take down a moon, let's say. So, first of all, let's clear it out of the way. It is not possible to deorbit any of the moons in the game. They are all on rails and nothing you can do will adjust their orbit in any way whatsoever. But, what if they weren't? What could you do? What would it take? Well, let's take the easiest moon. Now, if you take a look at Gilly, it is... Um, it is the lightest moon, it is the smallest moon, and it's in an orbit which is uh, at, at apoapse, it's only 280 meters per second. So it needs the least amount of fuel to uh, deorbit and bring it down to the surface of uh, EVE. Now, if you look at the KSP wiki, you will find that the mass of uh, Gilly is 1.24 times 10 to the 14 tons, or in plain English, that is 124 trillion tons. And that's, of course, assuming that the standard unit of mass in the game is the ton, right? Now, if we were to use the most efficient engine in the game to kill the velocity of Gilly, it would take approximately 4.4 trillion tons of fuel. That's quite a big number. That would, in turn, would require 276 billion large fuel tanks. Um, if you were to build a rocket with that, with that many fuel tanks and a single Nerva rocket, that would be 150 gigabytes of disk space. So it's actually within numbers that we can imagine. Now, if you wanted to be like me and use the fewest number of parts, you would use a single engine because using multiple engines only increases your thrust. It doesn't increase your efficiency. Using that single engine would take approximately 19 million years to burn through all of the fuel. Um, if you use time acceleration, of course, you can get that down to under 5 million years. But I think realistically, you're going to want a few million engines on there to help you out. So let's say that we now have this giant craft, which is made of 280 billion parts. How big is it? Well, it certainly won't fit inside the vehicle assembly building all, or the space plane hangar for that matter. Um, it will be a block of fuel tanks if you pack them most efficiently it'll be about 16 kilometers by 16 by about 25 kilometers in size and that is practically the same size as gilly itself and that again i picked gilly because it's the easiest moon to uh, deorbit but you're gonna have to build this rocket on Kerbin and transmit, transfer it across interplanetary space to its destination, soft land it, and only then can you start actually burning the fuel. Um, now, if we come a little closer to home, you could say, look at Minmus. Well, with Minmus, the planetary density is actually twice that of, of Gilly. And if you run through these equations, you end up with a, a rocket uh, or a basically a pile of fuel with a, an engine attached, let's say, that is the size of Minmus. You see, in the name of gameplay, the bodies in Kerbal Space Program are roughly one-tenth of the size of typical bodies in real life, but they want the gravity to be similar, so the densities are significantly higher than reality as well. But the fuel tanks have densities which are much closer to the kind of things we'd expect from, from regular liquid fuels. They're one ton per cubic meter. So you have to imagine that these rockets are pushing planets that are made of some unphysically dense sort of material. The densest element that we know is osmium, and it has a density of 22.6 tons per cubic meter. Kerbin's density is near to 30 tons per cubic meter. Gilly's density is more like 13 tons per cubic meter, which puts it closer to much more mundane um, elements such as lead. But of course, it's just a game. Maybe in the Kerbal universe, the constant of gravitation is about six times higher than it is on in our universe. In which case, our mass estimate for Gilly is off by a factor of six. And that would mean that uh, you could build a rocket that would deorbit it using just under a trillion tons of fuel or 50 billion large fuel tanks. Anyway, if you really do want to get into deorbiting moons, take a look at the mod section. There are people that have released 
uh, modded moons that you can put into the game. They're just large parts that you have to launch into orbit. Unfortunately, the game gets a little uh, weird when you have very high mass objects. Brushing up against some of these things literally will destroy your ship, even if you're moving in a tiny velocity. But it's worth messing about with nonetheless. Anyway, I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.